I wondered about you when you told me never to leave a box of wooden strike anywhere matches just lying around the house because the mice might get into them and start a fire. But your face was absolutely straight when you twisted the lid down on the round tin where the matches, you said, are always stowed. Who could sleep that night? <laughs> Who could whisk away the thought of the one unlikely mouse padding along a cold water pipe behind the floral wallpaper, gripping a single wooden match between the needles of his teeth? Who could not see him rounding a corner, the blue tip scratching against a rough-hewn beam, the sudden flare, and the creature, for one bright shining moment, suddenly thrust ahead of his time. Now a fire starter, now a torchbearer in a forgotten ritual. A little brown druid illuminating some ancient night. And who could fail to notice, lit up in the blazing insulation, the tiny looks of wonderment on the faces of his fellow mice, one-time inhabitants of what once was your house in the country. <laughs> it's called Osprey. Oh, a large, brown, thickly feathered creature with a distinctive white head, you perched on the top branch of a tree near the lake shore. As soon as I guide this, this boat back to the dock and walk up the grassy path to the house, before I unzip my windbreaker and lift the binoculars from around my neck, before I wash the gasoline from my hands, before I tell anyone I'm back, and before I hang the ignition key on its nail or pour myself a drink, I'm thinking of vodka soda with lemon, I will look you up in my illustrated guide to North American birds, and I promise I will learn what you are called. I am the dog you put to sleep as you like to call the needle of oblivion, come back to tell you this simple thing. I never liked you. <laughs> <laughs> or I like big titles, like my, fa I say my favorite title would be Thomas Gray, the English poet, has a poem called Ode on the Death of a Favorite Cat Drowned in a Tub of Goldfishes. <laughs> you know, I'm getting emotionally stirred up before we get to the first lines there. Yeah. Anyway, so this title uh, of my poem is uh, I Chop Some Parsley While Listening to Art Blakey's Version of Three Blind Mice. <laughs> and I start wondering how they came to be blind. If it was congenital, they could be brothers and sisters. And I think of the poor mother brooding over her sightless young triplets. Or was it a common accident, all three caught in a searing explosion, a firework perhaps? If not, if each came to his or her blindness separately, how did they ever manage to find one another? <laughs> Would it not be difficult for a blind mouse to locate even one fellow mouse with vision, let alone two other blind ones? <laughs> How, in their tiny darkness, could they possibly have run after a farmer's wife? <laughs> or anyone else's wife, for that matter. Not to mention why. Just so she could cut off their tails with a carving knife is the cynic's answer. But the thought of them without eyes, and now without tails, <laughs> to trail through the moist grass or slip around the corner of a baseboard has the cynic who always lounges within me up off his couch and at the window, trying to hide the rising softness that he feels. By now, I am on to dicing an onion, which might account for the wet stinging in my own eyes. Though Freddie Hubbard's mournful trumpet on Blue Moon, which happens to be the next cut, cannot be said to be making matters any better. <laughs>